I'm going to tell you a story. This is a true story that goes way back, many years ago. Jean-Claude was pretty new back then. I did not know a great deal. And when we were working, there was a very big, very massive man who was there. His name was Pierre. Pierre was the champion. He was the best. He would always cut down the most trees. For years, we were all very much in awe of him. He was my idol. I would chop down 17 trees in a day. Pierre would chop down 30 trees in a day. He was miraculous, incredible, so much better than anyone else. This went on for some time. Then one day, this little, um, how do you say, pipsqueak, this little tiny man comes in and he says, I would like to have a job chopping down the trees. And, and our boss says, you look like a 12-year-old. We cannot bring you in. You know, you're not uh, masculine tough enough. And he says, no, no, I'm a very good worker. You must hire me. And he says, no. And he sends him away. And we all laugh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You know, this little pip squeak thinks he can chop down the trees when it takes a man to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? So a couple of days later, this little man, he comes back again. He says, you must hire me. And he says, no, you're too little. He goes, I can out chop your best man, Pierre. Now we are all getting great laughter. This is impossible. How can the little, the little pip squeak out chop here is impossible. So we say, okay, we have a couple of beers and we sit down and we say, go to it. So we don't work that day, only Pierre and only the little man. Well, at the end of the day, Pierre comes back and Pierre was very focused. He is very competitive, red person. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't chop down 33. He chops down 34, 34, that's not easy for me to say, 34 tree. <laughs> His record for even Pierre, incredibly, unbelievable, yes? So then, yes, yes, so the little guy comes back and we ask the boss, how many trees did he get? And he says, 39. We are like, what are you kidding? This is not funny. Very funny, funny joke. The little boy chopped down 39 trees, please. He says, no, he chopped down 39. He beat Pierre. We are like, sacre bleu. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like to say it. <laughs> sacre bleu is impossible. <laughs> so, the next day, of course, they, they hired him. Yes, you know, he outchopped our best man. And uh, the next day, we come to work again. This time, Pierre is very buffed up and he is ready to go. He goes out and chops down 43. Greatest deal ever. And the little pips quick, 42. Amazing, unbelievable. Unti uh, no one can believe this. So the next day, Pierre decides... He's going to, how do you say, cheat. So instead of getting there at the normal time, Pierre comes in an hour early and starts chopping. And at the end of the day, with maximum effort, he gets 44 trees. The little pip squeak comes in an hour late, leaves an hour early and gets 49 trees. <laughs> Pierre. He's drinking himself into a coma now. <laughs> How is this possible? This is not possible. I am the biggest and the strongest and, and he doesn't... Hey, what is going on? Pierre is very upset, very, very upset. He wants to maybe chop down the pip squeak, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the next day, he comes in two hours early, stays two hours late, Chops down 51 trees, Pierre. When it's over, they have to put him in a bed with IV units, but he is going to win. The little pip squeak comes in late again. Chops down 54. He's unbelievable. Finally, Pierre grabs us. 
and says he must be cheating. There is something going on. He must be somehow having his friends come out of the woods and chop down trees with him. This is impossible. No one can beat me like this. So we all get together. And we follow the pipsqueak to his house. And we figure out that his friends who are chopping down the extra trees are meeting him there and doing their planning. So we hide and we watch. And the pipsqueak goes home. He carries his axe with him, very much like a musician carries his guitar with him everywhere he goes. And he goes boom. And instead of going to his friends who are chopping down trees, instead he goes to something that we have never really put a lot of energy into. Ah! And the little pipsqueak sits there for several long, long moments, close to an hour. And he puts a very, very, very sharp edge on his axe. Isn't that simple? See, Pierre was too busy chopping to take the time to sharpen his axe. Many of you are too busy making phone calls to take the time to sharpen your axe. I can't take three days off to go to this training because I have to keep chopping. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, he was big deal here, yes? He has very famous quote, many of you misquoted, so I'll get it straight for you. Abraham Lincoln says, if you give me six hours to chop down the tree, I spend four hours sharpening the axe. Six hours to chop, I spend four hours doing the sharpening. Most of you spend six hours doing the chopping. No, no. You must sharpen your axe. Now, we are putting together these programs on a regular basis for you. We have the trainings, the regionals, we have the national events. I just want you to remember the next time you are chopping and chopping and chopping and chopping and other people are beating you and you think it's unfair, remember, they are the ones sharpening their axe and it's legal for you to go and sharpen your axe too. Is this a good lesson to learn? 